Balloons. Yep, you heard me right, balloons. Today we're going to be talking about these balloons, how they're flown, what they cost, and much, much more. Coming up on Canard Boulevard. <sighs> Why are we featuring balloons on my canard channel? Well, I just thought they were interesting and there are quite a few different balloonists that actually launch from our airport on a regular basis. On this day, there were two of them taking off and I got to talk to them and ask quite a bit of questions to understand just what's involved in flying balloons in terms of licensing, costs, and procedures. We're gonna be looking at the setup and launching of these balloons and seeing exactly what goes into flying them in just a moment. But I first wanna talk about what the, the parts of the balloon are. You can see here, they're unrolling this balloon and you can see the envelope, which is the, the balloon part, what we consider the balloon, the, the nylon or polyester or synthetic envelope. And that's called the envelope. And that's where all the hot air goes into. And then we have shroud lines, kind of like a parachute, that go down to carabiners attached to the basket, which is, in fact, a wicker basket. The last part of this equation is heat. We get that through giant tanks of propane that are connected to a burner that has a pilot light. And when you pull the valve, it opens the valve that allows the propane to to fire a huge flame up to 8 to 10 feet long up into the envelope to heat the, uh, the air inside the envelope. Of course, this air now is less dense because it's hot, which means the more dense air outside causes the balloon to lift up into the air. To start, the balloon envelopes are laid out flat on the ground and a giant fan is positioned behind them. The fan is usually run by a generator in the chase truck that accompanies the balloon. It does require a support vehicle because you'd never know where the balloon's gonna come down and the chase truck has to go and meet it so that the balloon can be deflated and transported home when finished. Now these two balloons, instead of having generators with electric fans, have large fans with built-in engines to inflate the balloons. It takes an awful lot of energy and force to blow up these balloons, and it takes probably about 10 minutes of, of blowing with these fans to get them inflated enough that they can actually start using the burners to heat up that air. The envelopes are very lightweight. You can see just the engine running for that brief moment sent air enough in that it actually started in to inflate it. You'll also notice two people at the back holding onto ropes that are attached to the tops of the balloons. That's because when the balloons are actually inflated and then heated up and they stand up, the mass of air will continue to cause the balloon to flip over the other way. So as the balloon stands up, the people holding the ropes have to gradually let the balloon up and very gently, slowly let it rise up to full straight up. As the envelopes inflate, assistants help make sure that it's not folded underneath and that there are no tangles in, in the riser lines and that it inflates easily. As you can see, this is not the type of activity that you do on your own. It takes a full team of people to get a balloon up and flying. Once it's up and running, you can be running by yourself, but of course you do have to have your chase team to come find wherever it is that you end up coming down. And who can fly the balloons? Well, you be, might be surprised that the certification for balloons is almost exactly the same as airplanes. You can have a student certificate, you need a medical to get a private or a commercial license, you need to have a written, oral, and practical exam, and of course, if you are gonna fly for hire, you do have to have a commercial balloon license. Now we're almost at the point where we can start heating up the envelopes. You can see the purple balloon has started running his burner. It's heating the inside of the air inside the envelope and it will start lifting up as a result. The blue balloon will start doing the same very shortly. So what's it cost? to run a balloon like this. You would think it's fairly simple and fairly inexpensive compared to an airplane, but you would be wrong. First off, there is the cost of the envelope itself. The envelopes are only good for about 300 hours of flight time, and after that they have to be replaced. And they are $30,000 and up. That's for a basic one like you see here. More complex or larger ones can be 50, 60, 70, and $80,000. And like I said, they're only good for about 300 hours and then they need to be replaced. What about the, the fuel? The fuel itself runs about $100 an hour 
in terms of the propane being used. You can see the basket here has three 20 gallon tanks of propane. Overall, to run one of these balloons costs about $200 an hour. That's not including all the people you, the, that are being used to help assist with the balloons, chase the balloons, all the equipment for the balloons, the maintenance, and of course the purchase price of the basket, the burner, maintenance of all that. So pretty much just like all the rest of aviation, it is not inexpensive. Just like airplanes where you factor in an engine fund in your operating costs, here you would factor in your envelope fund. And in this case, a balloon costs about the same as what you would expect from a light twin airplane, like a, a twin Cessna. That's about the type of operating cost you're gonna see from operating a balloon. Here you can see they're gonna start heating up the purple balloon as they light off its burner. And you can see it puts out a ton of heat. That's 110 to 150,000 BTU going into that envelope. And you have to be very careful because if you miss, you could end up melting the envelope and damaging that $30,000 balloon. You can see as the envelope starts gathering hot air inside, it rises up very quickly. And it's quite strong. As you'll see, it's pulling the assistant along the ground as it's trying to lift up and pull it over. the assistant holding the top line will then fasten it to the basket. How does the balloon go up and down? You can see a red line coming down from the inside of the balloon. When that's pulled, it opens a panel at the top and allows some hot air to escape. That's typically done in an emergency or to deflate the balloon once it's on the ground. There's also sandbags or ballast that are carried with a balloon so that if the balloon is descending quickly, it ballast can be dropped to reduce the weight and allow the balloon to rise again. How about navigating the balloon? You would think it just goes up and the wind takes it wherever it's going to go and then when they see a, a viable landing place they let out some hot air and descend back down and land. But uh, it's actually a little more complex than that because as pilots will know, the wind at the surface is usually about 90 degrees or so from the direction of the wind at altitude. And depending on what the altitude is that you're actually at, the wind moves and changes in direction and airspeed. So by altering your altitude, you can in an effect steer the direction that the balloon is going more or less. And there are balloon races I have seen where you will see balloons that are just scraping right along the ground because that's the direction of, of wind that they actually need. Here you can see they're trying to make sure that, that the basket doesn't tip over as, it, as the wind starts to drag the balloon along as it's just getting to the point where it's almost weightless. It is still tied to the, the chase truck to keep it from flying away just in case, but as you can see, they need to make sure that that basket doesn't tip over and dump everybody out. Once the balloons are inflated and ready to go and flying, it's actually quite peaceful. Just the occasional roar of a burner going off. And if you've ever heard a balloon flying overhead, that's basically the only sound that you'll hear from time to time. The heated air inside the envelope does cool and that's why it is required that you have to keep running the burner from time to time. The balloon heats up, it starts to rise, and then as it cools, it starts coming back down. You have to consider that there may be temperature inversions aloft as well. The air could be cooler at the ground than it is up in the air, and the amount of lift generated is the difference between the temperature or density of the air inside the envelope compared to the ambient air. So if you go up higher and the air is hotter up higher, then you need to add more heat or else you're going to sink. Now that the air inside the envelope is a consistent temperature across, the purple balloon lifts off and the blue is just about ready to go. It's still tied down to its chase vehicle, but they'll remove that shortly. And there is a little bit of anticipation when you're adding the burner because 
as you add heat to it, the effect doesn't actually occur till several seconds later. So it's easy to overshoot or undershoot when you're actually adding heat to the balloon to add lift. Here you can see they're about to remove the tie down and away they go. For the people riding in the balloons and flying the balloons, they're now off for another hour or an hour and a half of a peaceful glide, weightless over the countryside. However, for the ground crew, the chase crew, they have to chase the balloons from the ground, trying to figure out what road will get to where they're going to be so that they can be on site when the balloon comes down and lands because they'll have to catch that basket, prevent it from tipping, especially if there's wind, and then help deflate the envelope, roll it up, pack it up, and then put away the basket for another day. I know this was a very different video for my channel today, but I just thought that I would share this experience because I've, I've seen these balloons come out of my airport several times and having talked to them, I just gained some interesting knowledge, especially about the costs of these things. I had no idea that it was so expensive to fly and own a balloon of this type. If you have any questions or comments or corrections, especially, I, I'm definitely no balloon expert. So if there's anything I got wrong, please leave them in the comments section below. And if you would mind clicking like on this video, if you thought it was enjoyable, just spending a few minutes of your time watching some colorful balloons. And I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel. That really helps me out more than anything else. Only about 20% of the people that watch my videos are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you could click subscribe now, that would really help me out. Thanks for watching.